Now, the bro splits, which have been around since Arnie and everyone before that, obviously the idea is that you're just going to hammer that muscle in that one specific session. Now, there's obviously pros to that and there's cons to that. And then with the push-pull legs, it's the same. It's like you're hitting a push day on maybe a Monday, you, you pull on a Tuesday, legs might be Wednesday, day off Thursday, and then you repeat the cycle, but with a, a different style of push-pull legs, if that makes sense. So when you're designing your program, is you want to be focusing on that frequency that you can train, okay? So let's use who was on the push-pull legs again. So we'll use Gary and we'll use yourself on why you choose them programs. Let's say, how many days a week can you train, Gary? And how many? you Four. Okay, so let's, because this seminar is about muscle building, we'll direct it on that. If you're trying to build as much muscle as you can, you're trying to hit with as much volume as you can, that you can recover from. If you do too much volume, you just fuck for days. And if you do too little volume, oh, you're pissing in the wind, aren't you? So if you're only training four days a week, how are your bro splits at the moment? I do like, change. I do change one day, it? Be five. Yeah. Then I'll this Wednesday, and then Thursday I'll do like, that kind of around, and try it Legs. Yeah, and the, uh, do you not have a shoulders day as such, like the but bros? Chest, I do, I do some shoulders at the end of the chest. Yeah. But I'll be honest, shoulders bore me. Yeah. So I just do bits at the end. Of the yeah, chest. yeah, yeah. When I do shoulders, I just do Yeah. Everyone has muscle groups, so they go through periods like they love training it and then they hate training it. Yeah. So now if you're on like a, a four day rotation, and let's say you're only training chest every Monday, by Thursday, Friday, your chest is probably recovered, ready to go again. But then you're waiting Friday, Saturday, Sunday before you hit it again. Yeah. So your frequency is not there on that sort of bro split. Like the bodybuilders do it because they live in the gym. They might be training twice a day. So they might be in a chest on a Monday morning. They might be again on chest again by Thursday night if they're doing splits. So with the push-pull leg situation there, you're going to get your frequency on your muscle groups. So let's say you hit a push on a Monday, pull on a Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday legs. Friday off, Saturday you're back in, you're back on your push again and there's not a bigger gap between them. The difference with the push-pull system, you have different focus days. So if you have two pushes, you might have a chest dominant with some shoulders, then you might have a delt dominant with some chest. And that's the same with your back as well. So that's why you take them considerations into place. Um, Stu, isn't it? Yeah. So Stu's more, he's using it more from a functional point of view. So he's going more fitness, high rocks here. And he's just trying to get his volume splits over the week. So the way he split it up, it sounds pretty sound to what he's doing for his goals. Now, exercise selection. Now, this there's a few key points you want to be making within this. It's one, your training age, and not your actual age. How long have you actually been in the gym training effectively? Because standard old school is like the barbell back squat. Great for leg training. What happens if your back's always smoking out before your quads do? Are your quads getting the hard work that it requires? So when it comes down to your exercise selection, you want to be choosing exercises that are going to give you the most carryover. Okay, so if we choose leg training, obviously you want to be looking at like your leg extensions, your leg presses and all that. But there is space for the big movements. But if you're coming from a pure muscle building point of view, you probably won't prioritize that in your programming. The only crux I would throw into this, I know Andy would be the same, is there's also the enjoyment factor when you come to your training. Like you'll see some guys on Instagram now, they're tying up every cable under the sun, they're putting bands on and they make uh, training really fucking boring. So there's an element to your training when you're selecting what you want to do where it's like, I actually enjoy that style of training as well. Like you've gone on your strength program, haven't you? So Ash, Ash's goal is strength and um, hypertrophy, but you like barbell work. So we'll put the barbell work in there as well. There's got to be a bit of, if you really enjoy doing an exercise, you're going to put more intention and intensity into it over another exercise that might be more applicable and a little bit better for muscle building on paper. But if you're not putting as much intensity, effort and intent into that exercise, you're not going to get as much out of it as something that might not be as um, deemed as perfect for muscle building. 100%. The fun, the fun side of things is a big one because consistency on anything, whether it's fat loss, muscle gain, just getting better at maths, consistency will always trump everything else. So if you haven't got stuff in there that you find enjoyable or fun, you're going to fuck your program off anyway. Intensifiers, obviously, these are like 
adding in more volume within the sessions. So you've heard of, have anyone heard of like muscle rounds, rest pauses, cluster sets, drop sets, everything like that. We'll touch a little bit on them today, but we'll go too in depth with them. Exercise, set up and intensity. Now, this is where today when we're in the gym, we're going to drive hard on. Because obviously, if you've got a coach at the moment, you're doing it on an online platform, it's very hard to tell your coach how hard you're actually training. Anyone can say, yeah, I'm smashing it. Then we watch a session back and you're fucking around on your phone for half hour. You're not really pushing them final reps. You're not really pushing to that max. So the way we set up an exercise, like anybody training at multiple gyms and you're a lap pull down in one gym feels completely different to another. So when you're in them situations, you need to understand some core principles with your setups that allows you to get the same setup every time, even if you're on different kit, the weights feel different, the barbells feel different, et cetera, et cetera. And then intensity, that's what we're going to be driving home, like I said, down there. So we'll really hit home on that today uh, once we get moving. Yeah. Like I said, just some core principles of what we've gone through there. If you're getting your phones out and you do want to ask questions, write them down now. Like I said, at the end on the Q&A, we'll drive hard on that. Has anybody got anything they want to throw out there now? Yeah, it's going to be like bits to fill. When you're on your own, I'm always trained on the own for a bit of years. Right, it's happening on your own. But you always want to hit fairly, but you can't hit fairly because there's no one going to spot you. Yes, well, that's your, that's your answer as well, yeah. So, hitting a... You can on your own reach fairly, but you're not going to So, if you was on a bench press, you need to stop out him. So what you'd probably do is you'd, you'd track your progress probably on that last rep before you would hit a failed rep. You know what I mean? So you haven't got anybody there to help you and then you do that. But if it was like a dumbbell chest press, you've got a bit more range and play to get because you can get the dumbbells out of the way. So it's just how you're tracking your training as well and how you're tracking that progressive overload with that. To answer the question or? Yeah, no, if, if you're just always exercise yeah. specific, yeah, it's exercise specific with that one. You can always be one or two reps shy of failure, but if the weight's increasing over time, you're still progressing. Yeah. Yeah. doesn't always have to be till it comes crashing down on you. Like, yeah. And the other thing is, is like people's perception of what that last rep is as well. Someone more experienced will know they've probably got another two in the tank because they can control under high fatigue, while someone brand new will burn out straight away and their arms will just pop off. We'll probably find today when we go through the gym that some of the weights that you would take to, let's say, call it eight reps you'll find that there'll be less reps in the tank today because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be nailing the execution of the exercise and the tempo and the technique and taking that to failure. What you'll see a lot of the time in the gym is lads will take a set to failure, but the technique's broken down two or three reps before that. So, you know, unless the reps look very similar to the when they did when they started, that's not actually the weight you should be using anyway, but we'll We'll see that in the session today. On that note that Johnny said, what's the issue with technique breakdown, maybe two, three reps before the end, and you're doing that every single week? What would be the issue with that long-term? Injuries being one and progress will stall, then you have to re reset the pro uh, restart the process, and it's very frustrating going from such a weight, but you're grinding every rep under the sun, you get nowhere, and then you've got to start again. Your ego has to take a massive hit, and that's where a lot of people struggle as well. Yeah. Yeah. How long do you stay on a program for before changing? So I'm going to use Matt Kenny as an expert. Anyone follow Matt Kenny, one of our coaches? He was on the same program. There he is. There he is. There he is. Was it 18 or 24 months? Didn't change the program. The only thing we changed was a few different sets and rep schemes and exercise order. Now, Kenny's a robot and he loves, he loves the iron and he loves the bodybuilding world, as you can see with how red he's going. <laughs> but to answer the question the, the program is as effective as long as you can stick to it and still progress it he still progressed the program for 18 to 24 months most people their heads blow off after 8 weeks because they want something fresh what's happening there is Kenny's understanding that when he when that program runs to like 6, 8, 12 weeks and then it becomes very difficult to get stronger that's where you're going to be making your gains because you're challenging the body more than it's ever been challenged before but if it's dead easy putting up your numbers you're not even into the program yet it's like if you was running a marathon, you have to build up to that marathon point. And when you hit the marathon, how do you get faster? You've got to make it harder in your training. It's the same with bodybuilding. The longer you stay on the same program as well, the better you'll get at the exercises. You see like bodybuilders who've been in the game for years and years and been training for a real long time. The skill on the exercises is so high that when they're using an exercise to hit the chest, 
the only hit in the chest because they will have repeatedly done that exercise for years probably. So the other problem with progr uh, program hopping is you're just getting good at the movements. You're just starting to target the muscles that you're trying to target and then you switch them and you're starting again. You know, when you're just getting to that point where you're actually really going to start utilizing that exercise and you move somewhere else to a different exercise, you're going backwards again, you're starting from scratch. So it just pops in my head here. Who knows who Branch Warren is? Old school bodybuilder. Anyone know who he is? No clue. Oh, Branch. Branch Warren. Branch Warren, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you watch him train, he's quite explosive with his training. But I guarantee if you train like him, you won't end up with the same results. He's just got, how old is he now? About 55, he's still jacked. Yeah. So he's got that much experience, the way he's developed over time, that he can move like that, but also internally in his mind, he'll be feeling every fucking contraction he's popping out. While lads in the gym are just trying to hit that one rep max bench yeah. or the dumbbell presses or whatever, yeah. and they're just they're grinding reps. There's a big difference. While you'll see a lot more modern bodybuilders, a lot more focus on like stretching, squeezing. Yeah. There is two elements to it as well like that. Yeah. 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 Irregardless of anabolics anyway, he'd, he'd be jacked out of his mind just because he's an absolute nutcase in the gym, do you know what I mean? And that's why intensity, we're going to drive home on this, is one of the biggest drivers when we come into muscle building. Are you actually training hard enough? That's why, on that topic, why you would use tempos as well. So tempos are a really good way of teaching you how to do that exercise correctly. So if you've got a training program from one of us guys, you'll see a series of numbers and it's the timing of the movement. Well, if you follow that timing very closely, you will improve your skill on that exercise. You will get very good at that exercise. One reason why people don't improve the skill set and don't target the muscles that they want to target is because they're just moving it too quick. So tempos are really handy for that as well. So, I mean, who's, anybody follow the program and use tempos? You've got your tempos. Yeah? Anybody not? I have seen, I've, I've not gone off you, but I've been to the goal. Yeah, yeah. I've seen your video of us both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you not, you not, never really used it? Do it. All right, sound. Yeah. Do you do? Oh, sound. Dan's got you covered then, hasn't he? What um, do you mean issues for people? not sticking to a program is what do you say for lads that sat down now if you want to build muscle why would you say they're not achieving it what are the main things that they think they're doing wrong they don't think that they're giving it enough time to number one get really good at the exercise and really push the exercise to its upper limits like yeah. the other reason why you might switch a program is because you're at you just bouncing your fucking head off a brick wall you're not getting anywhere but you've give it weeks and weeks and weeks you know, but if you don't give it that extended period of time where you are really, really trying to push it and push it and push it, you're never really gonna you're never gonna know whether that program really needs switching or not. There's always periods in your program where like sessions would just be really hard and you get nervous. I remember back in the bodybuilding days, training legs. You used to be getting nervous on a Monday and you'd be training on a Thursday because you know what's coming. Like that's the sort of intensity that you want to be going at that it's like, fuck, I've got to do that. I've got to beat them numbers and I've got to do that. You're kind of turning up and you're like, I'll have a bit of this and I like that because it feels good and I'll do this. Just the time, what time will that be? You want to tell me that cop to make that? Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's the sort of level. And if, if you look at anyone in like high end sport athletes, it's the same for them. They'll be nervous turning up to training because they know they're going to get flogging or whatever it, you know, specific is. It should be a challenge. We all want that fun element, but it needs to be challenging. If it ain't challenging, it ain't like, fuck, then that's why your muscle gaining potential will be lower. You know what I mean? That's why your rates will be slower because that intensity is just not in that top 10% of what you can give.